so much go. pain on that. What's your, hair? Yeah. What's your favorite part about coming to the racetrack with your mom and dad? Winning. I actually wanted to start off by talking about Brexton. How did he get into racing in the first place? Well, having that opportunity to be able to uh, go to the racetrack, go to the go-kart track, and kind of watch and see uh, some of the other kids that, that I know, the dads and stuff like that, their children are racing. So Brexton, he liked it. So um, one of the dads let me borrow his car and, you know, he kept getting better each time out and got a little bit faster and got more comfortable with it. So then it was, okay, I guess we need to get into this. It's kind of crazy from my side. I always was worried about Kyle. Um, and now this is a whole new level because he's so tiny and little. I think it was the first test with his own car. He's getting a little faster, a little braver, and it's the car was a little bit loose, like the, it wants to spin. And uh, he overcorrected and it turned him dead right and shot him right into the outside wall. And thankfully mom wasn't there. <laughs> Samantha wasn't there for that. So I come home and Brexton's like nose is bruised and bloody. He's got two little black eyes and I'm like, what? what the hell happened? It was a hit, it was a bang, and I was like, oh no, like it, it's over now, like we're done. So I ran out on the track and I checked him to make sure he was okay and he was crying. It hurt, you know, and his helmet hit the steering wheel, which um, it actually broke the helmet. He hit so hard, so he was fine. So he got out, we took a break, and uh, I was like, hey Brex, you know, when you hit the wall, the engine stopped. So I don't know if the engine's okay. I need you to go out there one more time just to make sure that the engine's okay. And he's like, okay, I'll do it, you know? So he was already game to get back in. And I'm like, we might have a race car driver here. I just don't like any of it. If they were both maybe like golf, golf feels good, safe. I was talking to your brother, Kurt, and he pointed out like Brexton's getting into it much younger age than the two of you did. Uh, Brexton's five, six years old and we still have to make sure that he's being a kid, but still you gotta have that Bush mentality of we're here to win, we're not here to make friends. How have you gone about starting to find that balance? It's tough, it's really tough, because I'm very competitive, and even Brexton is very competitive as well too, where we don't like to lose. Are you gonna win more races than your dad has? Yes, <laughs> I already have, because this year he just won one, and I won three. <laughs> We weren't supposed to say that. Brexton has more wins than Kurt and Kyle Busch both combined this year. So uh, he's a three-time winner. And um, I made a joke with a few people the other day. I was like, he's the, he's the winningest KBM driver of the last two years. So um, I, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. So I will admit, Kyle and I are type A, overachiever type people. And we have to check ourselves. Say, OK, he's only five. This is fun for him. The problem is, is we don't think like five-year-olds, so we don't understand. He takes things so literally. I did flag class with him while Kyle was at the race, and I showed him the checkered flag. And I'm like, you know, you drive through the checkered flag, you don't stop till after it, yada, yada. Well, during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the checkered flag was pink and white, not black and white. He didn't stop. So we finally get him to stop. I'm like, what are you doing? said, it wasn't the flag you showed me. Or dad told him, you gotta butt up to the car in front of you. And Kyle went, butt up. So what'd he do? He went out there, boom, right into the kid. And he's like, I butted up like you said. <laughs> like, yes, technically you are listening. How have you seen kind of family get involved? Yeah, uh, my dad was a, a bit rough in the beginning, just like I was, where we weren't seeing very much improvement. We were like, ah, he ain't got it. He was kind of timid. We weren't sure that he knew where the gas pedal was for a while. There's other dads that come up to us and they talk to him and me and like, hey, don't be so hard on the kid, like give him a break. Another one of the dads was like, you realize you're bringing your child to the racetrack in a car seat, right? How do you see Kyle and Tom working with him? Oh my gosh, it's, they're so serious. It's borderline funny. I mean, five years old and they are already, you know, cup level with him. You ever call him out on it? All the time. And Tom's always like, hey, I made two champions. This is gonna be my third. It's kind of a unbelievable point of pride, but it's, it's scary because the expectations are, everybody just figures they'll get this. It's more pressure than you would think. It's more fun than you would think. It's odd mix. My dad loves his racing. He still has 
uh, sprinkles of information that that bring a, a a wide eye to myself and to Kyle, and he makes us think still. Brexton should be a, should be a world champion here by age twelve. My only pre-race ritual in Brexton, <laughs> and everybody here yells at me. I'm always like, "Do you have to go potty? Do you have to go potty? Because like you're gonna be in the car." And Kyle was like, "You have to call it something cooler than going potty. <laughs> like he, you can't do that." So. Um, no, right now our pre-race ritual is making sure the driver is fed and has gone to the bathroom. I get made fun of out here because I have Brexton's, you know, water with his straw, his snacks laid out, a fan or a heater for him. I'm his chef, his stylist, his assistant. Um, engineer? Oh yes, I'm now the data engineer and his momager. I am all the things. <laughs> How much do you look forward to the day when Either you could potentially be following him around or you guys could actually be competing against one another. I don't look forward to that day. No? <laughs> no that yes and no. I just want to focus on myself. Like I, okay. I want to make sure I'm doing everything I can to win races. But then if he's out there, I'm going to be worried about him and, 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 and teaching him. So I don't know if there's going to be a whole lot of crossover for him and I. And there might be a way where I retire from cup racing and go race late models where Brexton might be on his way up and is racing late models and we spend a year together there. And then after that, I'm probably gonna be done and, and he'll be hopefully on his way up.